Well, good evening, everyone. And some of you are gathered here tonight, and some of you will be watching online. And this is our Ashes service, our Ash Wednesday service, and it marks the beginning of Lent. And I will light the Christ candle, signifying that the light of Christ is with us in the light and the darkness. And we are going to start with a gathering hymn. Um, it's in Voices United, uh, or no, in more voices, the one with the red, um, red binding. And it's number seven, and it's Gather Us In. And we're going to sing it a couple of times, Christopher, or how many would you like to do? Two times. Into the silence of the void, the Creator spoke, and the world came into being. The Word of God and the vastness brought light from darkness, matter from nothing, flesh from dust, life from lifelessness. In the quiet of a small town in Palestine, the Word of God came to us. Even though of one being with the Creator, Jesus our Christ, taking on human form, was born, lived and walked among us, speaking the words of life, he was crucified, died, and was buried. He rose from the dead and speaks to us today. He is the one who saves us from ourselves. In the stillness of our souls, the Spirit of God, who is the one with the Creator and the Christ, whispers, the word and calls us back to the creator back to the Christ back to the wholeness of everlasting life in the unity of the creator Christ and spirit Ash Wednesday is a day when we face our own mortality the fact that our bodies at some point in time will return to the earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. 
and our souls? Well, I love the imagery of the last verse of the poem. In the stillness of our souls, the Spirit of God, who is one with the Creator and the Christ, whispers the word and calls us back to the Creator, back to the Christ, back to the wholeness of everlasting life in the unity of the Creator, Christ and Spirit. This is Ash Wednesday, and it also marks the beginning of Lent. What is Lent all about? Similar to Advent, it is traditionally a time of repentance, deep reflection, and prayer. Often it is known as a time of giving up something, like a favorite food, or something else that brings pleasure, or is considered a treat. And the other feature of Lent is a focus on giving to others. In the ancient church, this practice is known as almsgiving. And listen to what Matthew's Gospel has to say about these traditional Lenten practices. Reading from Matthew 6, verses 1 to 6, and 16 to 21. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Prayer and fasting. All practices meant to point us more fully towards God, to focus our attention on Him. So perhaps today, Ash Wednesday, where the focus is on death, facing our own mortality, it is a fitting start to Lent. Because when we are at the end, where else do we turn to? Who else do we turn to but God? Let us pray. Our ancestors in the faith used ashes as a sign of our repentance. 
a symbol of the uncertainty and fragility of human life. Like them, we have tasted the ashes of hopelessness. We have walked through the ashes of our loss and pain. We have stood knee deep in the ashes of our brokenness. God of our lives, out of the dust of creation, you have formed us and given us life. May these ashes not only be a sign of our repentance and death, but reminders that by your gift of grace in Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, we are granted life forever with you. Amen. And while Christopher's playing some music, I'm going to invite you to a time of silent prayer. And as you're comfortable, you can come forward for the imposition of ashes. And while this is happening, please wear a mask, and I will wear a mask as well.
anyone else like to come forward? Would you like to come forward? Created from dust, held together by God's extravagant love, we turn away from sin and leave today embracing God's love. Amen. Amen.